Hey guys, happy Wednesday. It is such a beautiful day out that I decided to do this in the backyard. Um, so you may hear the occasional or quite often a car drive by. That's because I back right up to a road. So, but today I wanted to bring you this book that I found in the library um, yesterday. It is 2030, A Day in the Life of Tomorrow's Kids. And this is a really cute book. Um, it's all about, it's from Amy Zuckerman and James Daly. Um, it's all about kind of the kids of the year 2030 uh, or 2030. Um, kind of how their uh, life is a little bit different than ours today. I am not going to read the entire book to you today. Um, I want to bring this so that if you are interested in this book, there are some quite um, a few discoveries in here that I want you to make on your own. So I just picked out a few pages to read um, and they're really interesting. So 2030, a day in the life of tomorrow's kids. Okay, first off, I want to talk about how things change. It happens every day. You turn on the TV and before long, there will be a commercial for something new and improved. Car styles change, clothing styles change, all because people and their tastes change. If you ask your parents what life was like when they were kids, you might be surprised to hear that they didn't have many of the things you enjoy today. No cell phones, computers, or DVDs. Some never had VCRs. Ask your grandparents about their childhoods, and, they'll, and you'll learn that some didn't even have a TV. They listened to programs on the radio, and their uh, imaginations pro, uh, provided the pictures. Every day, scientists, engineers, and other people with big imaginations come up with new ideas that change our lives. Before you know it, one of their inventions might appear in your home or school. What will a kid's life be like in many years from now? What sort of inventions will change in uh, kids' daily lives? No one can predict exactly what's going to happen next, but by looking at your world today and asking some very smart scientists, engineers, and futurists, we come up with a credible idea of what life might be like in your future. So buckle your seat and get ready. It's time to take a, take a trip into the year 2030. So. Morning light splashes into your bedroom as you wake up. You yawn and stretch, then notice an orange glow coming from a glass ball that sits on your night table. Someone is trying to reach you on the data orb. Oomph! Your dog, Willie, jumps on you, barks once, then says in perfect English that he wants to go for a walk. Willie isn't really talking. What you hear is a voice, voice synthesizer attached to his collar. A little computer translates his barks to, and body movements into simple words and phrases that tell you that he is uh, hungry, playful, or just wants some company. Turning off Willie's speaker so you don't have to listen to him, you reach back to your data orb. An image starts taking shape. It's your friend's face looking at, remember, uh, looking at you. Remember the witch's crystal ball in Wizard of Oz? Don't forget to meet me at the skateboard park this afternoon, he says. The data orb is one of the ways you stay in touch with people in the year two, uh, 2030. It transmits and receives three-dimensional images from all over the world so you can see what your friend is doing, what's going on in the neighborhood, or even what's happening at school. Yes, there is still school in 2030. What I think is interesting, and that sounds a whole lot like our cell phones now where we just video call each other, but this is an orb, so maybe it does a lot more than just a normal cell phone. this page about the school. Before long, you arrive at a school. The building looks normal, but the way it is made is different. The materials used aren't wood, steel, or even plain concrete. They're special plasticized, uh, plasticized concrete blocks with built-in wiring and plumbing. They snap together just like toy bricks, you can even move the walls around to change the shape of the room.
So it kind of sounds like their schools and buildings might be made with something similar to like Lego blocks where you just stack them, but wires and uh, electricity must be all built in. On the surface of the building and windows is a thin coating of cells that collects energy to help control the building's temperature. Just like the fibers in your clothing, the building surface becomes dark when it's cloudy and light when it's sunny. That sounds a whole lot like solar panels. It's a bit windy out here now. Ooh, I liked this page a lot, so I marked this one. In social studies class, your teacher asks you to find an article on your computer about Central Africa. By 2030, the web has become so enormous that you need a tool called a personal agent to help you. This humanoid, three-dimensional figure, figure asks you all sorts of questions and gets you what you need. Sort of like your very own butler. Your teacher announces that it's time for a trip uh, to ancient Egypt in northern Africa. The room darkens and the screen drops down from the ceiling. Suddenly, pyramids appear from all sides. It seems like you can walk up and touch them. These are giant holograms or special photographs made with the air, um, with the aid of a laser. When a hologram is lit, it is in just the right way, the three-dimensional image appears. By 2030, individual holographic images can be projected so rapidly that they appear to move. That's why you and your classmates feel as though you're traveling through Egyptian desert and not just watching a movie. How fun are field trips gonna be when you think you're actually in Egypt? It's gonna be quite different. a little bit more advanced than just virtual reality, like those virtual reality glasses. I'm going to skip this page and I'm going to go to this one right here. Speaking on that note, I thought this one would be kind of cool about knowing about kind of what recess might be like. The bell rings for recess. You go straight to virtual batting practice in the gym. You pick up your plastic bat and the virtual reality headset. When you put on the headset, you feel as though you've stepped right into a baseball field. It's a clear day and other players are waiting for you. Whoosh, the first pitch is a curve. You swing and miss. Whoosh, again. This time it's high and fast. Crack, you knock a single right up the middle. So that kind of reminds me, we have the virtual reality glasses right now, but that's kind of taking it a step further where it's available for kids at actual ski um, recess. There's a little sidebar right here, um, and it says some kids are practicing skiing moves over at the virtual ski area. You strap yourself into a ski machine, which moves up and down from side to side to mimic the shape of a mountain. The machine lets you know when you're off balance without letting you fall. That last bump sure felt rough. I'm going to zoom in kind of on that right there. Especially for us here in Houston, we don't get to ski. So that would be super fun to do at recess, to actually get to learn and practice and make it feel like you're skiing down a mountain when there's no mountains around us. Tired of batting practice? Uh, it's there's still time to join a bunch of kids on the smart trampoline. I thought this would be fun. I would want to own one of these. It looks just like a regular trampoline, but there are hundreds of tiny electronic sensors woven into the material that instantly measures your weight, bounce, and strength of each jumper. The surface changes from loose to firm to give you the best jump results possible. Everyone is bouncing at different heights and speeds. It's just like flying. Okay.
Ring! The bell rings and it's time for lunch. In 2030, food can be altered so that your brain thinks that even foods you hate to eat, like Brussels sprouts, taste delicious. Hmm. That's because scientists have discovered the part of your brain that controls taste and flavors. So you'll be happy to eat healthy things. On your tray is a tofu burger that tastes like a real hamburger. Your soy drink looks and tastes just like the double chocolate shake at the ice cream shop. And your broccoli spears look and taste just like french fries. Bloop, bleep, bloop. That's your watch reminding you to beam your health information to your doctor's office for your appointment on Saturday. Push a button and the health gauge on your watch automatically sends information on your blood pressure, body temperature, and even feelings directly to your doctor's office. That sounds like a lot healthier way to eat. I'm sure we would all eat healthier things if they tasted like the things we normally like. Don't forget there's additional sidebars on a lot of the pages as well. Okay, I'm going to skip a few pages and I'm going to go to this one because I like this one a lot. Home. Finally. Grabbing some peanut butter crackers, you take off to meet some buddies at a skateboard park. Once you're inside, a friend lets you try some kickflips on his smart magnetized skateboard. Amazing. It hovers over the ground just like a magic carpet. Okay, maybe you're only a couple feet off the ground, but you feel like you're flying. Think of the awesome moves you can do. And I want to read this sidebar to you because I thought this one was interesting. We have the little boards now where you get on it and you kind of lean forward and they go forward and they go back and they have that little motor on them. Um, this one is a hoverboard, so it's actually hovering above the ground and not touching it at all. So it says, hold two magnets apart. Bring one close together. One side is drawn toward the first magnet, but when you flip it around, it's pushed away and repelled. That's much like the, what they're talking about these hoverboards. So I brought two magnets and kind of zoom in on them. So if you push them the, uh, the right way, whoops, they, you can see they snap together. But if you take your magnet and you put it the opposite way, you see there's a little bit of a force and I can't quite get them to touch. That's kind of like the hoverboard. They must have some kind of thing where they aren't quite touching, so it's hovering just above the ground, so it would be like this. Hovering just above the ground, but not quite touching. Whereas if you flip it, they touch. So, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I'm gonna go to one more page. Two more pages, excuse me. After the park, it's back home. You do your homework and then you eat. You can't wait to finish dinner so that you can go to the Eco Village's Fantatrek Center. That's a special room outfitted with three-dimensional videos. Plus, touch and smell technology so that you feel like you have entered a fantasy world. Tonight's program is Return of the Dinosaurs. Once you enter, you feel like you're in prehistoric times. You see a landscape and even the smell of the warm, humid earth of millions of years ago. To your right, baby dinosaurs are cracking out of their eggs. Over yonder are two raptors fighting it out by a stream. So, that's kind of cool. Your movies are now different. It's like you're there in the actual world that the movies are trying to... Uh, whatever scene they're portraying. So I think that's really cool. I can't wait to see that happen. Okay. It's late when you return home. You don't even complain when mom and dad tell you it's time for bed. It sure has been a busy day in year 2030. Your toothbrush contains toothpaste that squirts right into your mouth, which makes a brushing thing a whole lot less messy. Yawning, you toss on some pajamas and slip under the covers. Your data orb reminds you that it is almost time to go to sleep, so before you turn out the lights, you decide to reach for your favorite type of entertainment. 
It's light, easy to handle. The pages are soft, I'm sorry, the insides are soft and perfect for viewing, and it has provided kids and adults entertainment for many centuries. You drift off to sleep reading a book. So what I really like about this book is that I found it in the nonfiction section. So you would think that maybe this wouldn't quite be true, but there's definitely some pieces in here that are possible. I'm actually going to piggyback off this book tomorrow for the next one. Um, and I don't want to spoil the surprise for you yet, but um, it's another book that I have that kind of goes off of uh, futuristic things. So this one I thought was really interesting. Again, it's going to be in my library so that you can look at it whenever you get back to school on Monday um, and on the 11th. Um, and there are definitely some things I skipped in here that are just totally awesome, but I just wanted to save some of those discoveries for you as well. So I hope y'all have a good night, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye, guys.